Good morning, guys. How are you? It's Sunday, and uh, there's no football today because the Super Bowl is next week. So uh, the only football we have today is the Pro Bowl, which is a joke. They don't even really play hard because they don't want to get hurt. Oh. Uh, anyway, so yesterday my daughter had a soccer game, and I decided I was going to take my uh, son's car out for a drive because, uh, you know, if you don't drive a car for a while, it'll just die, you know what I mean? The battery will die, especially in the wintertime when the battery drains a little bit more quickly than normal. Uh, anyway, so we're ready to go. It's about a 40-minute drive over to the soccer game, you know? And uh, put the key in and... Kind of like this. Or in this case, nothing at all. The battery I got from uh, Walmart, I forget when. Could it be more than three or four years ago? It might be. So it might be uh, needing a new battery. Uh, Walmart batteries for cars, $49.99. Don't go and spend $100, $125, whatever. These batteries work just great, and they last for about two or three years, which is the average lifetime of a battery, about $100. You know, uh, you can get the, the larger CCA stuff, like $350, $400, $550, whatever. But those are like $150, bucks, almost $200. Uh, $49.99, lasted me three, four years. It's pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to charge this baby up. This is a 1995. Acura Legend, original, 56,000 original miles, unbelievable, um, but I don't drive it enough because my son's at college, so if you don't drive it, it'll die. I'm going to hook up a battery charger for it and uh, charge it up while I'm wrenching today. So I've got the battery charger on here. Uh, if you look at the sticker here, actually it says uh, December of 2017. So actually this battery is only about two years old. It should last longer than uh, two years. Uh, anyway, I was wrong. This is actually a 65-1 uh, group. It actually has 650 CCAs. That's really good. 805 cranking amps at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It's an Everstart. And as you can see, it's from Walmart. I paid $49.99 for it. Good deal. But um, it shouldn't have uh, died this quickly, though, for sure. So I'm going to um, charge it up for a few hours and uh, see if we can start this thing. I wanted to start it because um, well, I need to get this car out of the way so that uh, I could test my uh, LT1000. This is episode 11. Episode 11 of my LT1000 uh, lawn tractor that I got for free. That's right, free. Uh, got it from a guy named Raja, who uh, was down in Oceanside, pretty far. But he was giving it away completely free. Um, it's a six-speed, and it's your usual green LT1000. Um, as you know, I spent about... Uh, Nine episodes rebuilding this uh, Briggs and Stratton opposed twin 46 cubic inch uh, engine. While going through my videos from the past, uh, I have rebuilt three or four of these opposed twins in the past couple of years. And uh, while I thought that I never um, rebuilt a 46 cubic inch, the red LT1000 that I got from Hallworth, New Jersey. The one where I drove to New Jersey to get it, and the only reason why was because the guy gave me $50 in gas and tolls to come and get his tractor from New Jersey. That was an incentive that I couldn't turn down. You know, Not only are you giving me the tractor for free, but you're also paying me $50 to come get it. That's crazy, right? He also gave me a brand new tire, uh, a bagger system, and some other stuff. It was really worth it for me to do it, you know, and I, I went, uh, unfortunately, on a weekend on a Cross Bronx Expressway. If you guys are ever in Long Island, uh, or New York for that matter, coming into the city, avoid the Cross Bronx Expressway 
at all means because uh, that will drive you crazy. You are guaranteed to have traffic up your ass, okay, for sure. As you guys saw from my last episode, um, engine runs, runs very smooth, starts up well, but then when you lower the throttle from high to, you know, midway, engine stops, and it stops abruptly. It goes, it's moving, it's slowing down, and then, boom, it stops. So that worries me. Um, that's like, it, it's almost, it almost feels like the pistons are moving, and then once you get the low enough throttle, if it's on high throttle, it'll move. But once you get to low throttle, I almost feel that there's friction between the pistons and the walls, and it just <clears throat> stops. Like, there's not enough lubrication, you know what I mean? I will tell you, though, I think both pistons have that little semicircle chip on the bottom. That might be the cause of it, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show you what I mean. So in that engine, it has two pistons that are slightly damaged. Like this one right here, where you see that the semicircle here. It's been chipped off. I really didn't have any choice because I didn't have any other pistons and I wasn't about to go out and buy one, especially for an engine that I didn't think was going to run. It's amazing that I think things runs really well, you know. So anyway, it has both pistons in there look like that. So I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's rubbing against a wall, maybe. It's not like that. It's like this. So there's kind of like a jagged edge here. So it might be scraping the wall, I'm not sure. But that's what I'm thinking. This is a good piston. It should look like that. The reason why I didn't put this piston in is because this piston is missing the bottom oil ring. And yeah, I could take this oil ring and put it in there, right? But guess what? It's a different height. It won't fit. Well, this is a different type of piston than this one, even though they, they, look, they look the same. But because uh, I didn't have the bottom oil ring to this, I didn't put it in, even though it has the good sides here, you know? Oh, so uh, what I was trying to say is that um, that Hallworth, New Jersey uh, red LT1000 that I rebuilt that opposed twin engine, that was actually a 46. It had the curved connecting rods like, like this one does, the angled one. So uh, I guess I just got really lucky on that one. I didn't have any problems putting those um, connecting rods in. Unless the engine block itself was designed differently, you know what I mean? Um, the cutouts for the rotation might have been cut out a little bit more than this one. You know, this one had to be precise. But, um, you know, after I get this one running, believe it or not, I have enough parts to rebuild another opposed to an engine. Not quite sure whether or not that uh, engine block will accommodate the 42 cubic inch straight connecting rods that I got for this, but never used because it didn't fit, you know? So, we'll see what happens. But today, um, today I'm gonna be Trying to fit this um, shroud over this because you can't run this engine without the shroud. It will damage the engine. Not that I think the engine is going to last much longer anyway due to these piston problems. And I also want to fabricate some tins. I have the black isolation, they call it air guides for this side. But I don't have one for this side. The reason why I cover up the carburetor is because the opposed twin carburetors, the mouth of it is vertical so that any debris, leaves, dust, water can go right in there so I cover it up. There's a bunch of things I want to um, do with this thing today. Um, pump up all the tires because the rear tire looks kind of flat. This one's flat too on the left, uh, right side. Um, also, um, the hood. I want to reinstall the hood after I figure all this stuff out, right? And the hood has this duct tape that's all over it in the front with a big gaping hole. So that'll be kind of a challenge to see, uh, 
what different way I could do um, to repair that hole. Um, I've done a lot of that stuff before, but you know, kind of rudimentary. I would just take like some plastic, like from a plastic case for tools or something like that, cut out the shape of a square or whatever and just silicone it on there. But it looks, you know, rudimentary, like I said. Um, I was thinking about maybe just duct taping the back part of the hole, right? And then taking a hot glue gun and, and filling up that part there. But that would look really bad too. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm going to be working on that. Mostly just cosmetic stuff. Um, another thing I'm going to do is once I get this figured out, I'm going to test the, uh, the drive, see if it moves forward and backwards as well as checking out whether or not the uh, mower deck works and uh, if anything gets caught up on it or whatever. Um, it's infamous for these LT1000s that if you don't have the front drag rods just perfect, right, um, once you start the engine, the blades will start turning on its own, you know, which means that the belt is too tight or you hit something and uh, kind of like the same problem I had with that uh, yellow MTD. Uh, the blades are engaged whether you do the PTO lever or not. But uh, we had this running yesterday, and the blades didn't move, so that's a good sign. Hopefully everything will be all right. Anyway, let's get to that hood. Here's a quick shot of the hood. It's got duct tape all over it, right? And it's got this, I guess, triangular gaping hole in the front. And he basically just took... Um, duct tape and put it over the hole. Um, I don't. I haven't removed the bottom part of this duct tape. The hole could be bigger than what we see there. But um, it's been here for a while. You can see the remnants of the uh, adhesive of the duct tape. I'm gonna have to get some kind of a buffing thing and buff that stuff out, you know, because it just looks horrible. So I took off the towel to reveal everything here. My problem is, I thought that there were several different types and sizes of this shroud and I looked online to try to get um, the right one but I everything everything I see online is the same one I have here this is such where if you look at it right this hole is almost lined up and this hole isn't I have to push down more on it to get this hole to line up but it's this part here is already resting on this part here so it's gonna scrape you know what I mean In the back the back, not even close to lining up. I mean, you have to push this down like half an inch to get this, the holes to line up. But you can't do that because no, this is not going to turn because it's already touching, you know? So that's my pickle today. I have a feeling that when I was repairing this engine, or rebuilding it, if you will, um, it didn't have the flywheel on here. Therefore, it was resting on this metal tin. So I'm thinking maybe the tin was pushed down. So I have to try to use my uh, channel locks. and kind of like bend it like Beckham, you know? But look, if you look at the teeth, I mean, we're talking about a millimeter away from it, you know? So I don't know how much I can bend upwards to give it the clearance. You guys following what I'm saying? I know you are. You know, if I just lift it up a little, I know it's not designed for it, but I mean, maybe it's already bent that way so that this will help. At least that's what I'm thinking, you know? Anyway, I'll mess with it and see how close I come. So I've been messing with that uh, cover. Look who stops by completely unannounced. I know, I'm sorry. Do you own any other jacket other than camouflage? Hey, Happy New Year. Happy, thank you very much. How you doing there, Bob? Good to see you, fellas. Sorry to come by unannounced. Yeah, what's going on, man? Uh, same old, same old. I, you know, being you don't come by, you don't call, you don't write. You were supposed to call me when you had time, remember? And I was going to come by with my van and pick up all that sh hey, stuff. Hey, congratulations, dude. That thing runs, man. Well, uh -oh. <laughs> who knows, right? I mean... We don't know exactly what's going on with that thing, especially with the uh, abrupt stopping. Yeah, that scares the shit out of me. Yeah, yeah well, you know what? Really. I was thinking, I was telling I was telling all our viewers today, right, that I think I know what's wrong with it, maybe. So, uh, so here's, 
here's a bad piston, right? Yeah. You can see that when this piston broke, that rod hit this part and, you know, made this little semicircle part. Yeah. And this part's good, right? Yes. So, like, this is a good one, yes. right? So, look, if, if this finger is a cylinder wall, feel how, how, like, jagged that is, you know what I'm saying? It's not... Yeah. You following what I'm saying? Yeah, the broken pieces. Yeah. And if you thing. if you feel this part, it's smooth because, you know what I'm saying? If the cylinder wall is smooth, right, mm -hmm. like this. It probably knocked it out of round, too, a little bit. Maybe. So that's what I'm thinking is that the jagged part is kind of not catching. I mean, maybe a little. It's catching on are the you, cylinder wall. Not? Yes. Oh, you are. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking it might be, but I really had no choice because I didn't want to go out and spend hundred dollars on pistons you know what I mean so Larry and Bob came by they wanted to give me some stuff because they didn't want it he was gonna throw it to the curb and I says oh don't throw it to the curb well he's not gonna give me this this is he's just showing me what he picked up the other day how much you pay zero dollars zero is great <clears throat> yeah I had one of these things before they're nice brand Look. new fucking tires yeah it looks like it seats good uh, I don't know if it runs. Oh, this yeah. is a little older than uh, the ones that I had before, but Ooh. this is this is like a Sabre. The Sabre has the same hood. If I'm correct, that engine, it yeah. has two engine covers. One's kind of offset. It's an Intec Gris. Hey, take a side shot of it. Take a look. <coughs> Good shape, man. Well, the tires are brand new. Yeah, that's exactly the, like if you looked at my green saber that I sold a little while back, right? It has the same exact hood. I'm missing the uh, deck lever cover. Deck lever cover? Yeah, you know, the deck lever adjustment between your oh, legs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely don't have that. All right. It's good, though. The value grade? Of course I see value grade. It means it's a piece of POS. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Bob and Larry are giving me some uh, leaf blowers. I'm they're bringing me back my batteries, which they tried to restore for me, but this one is Dunsky. And the other one you say might yeah, hold a charge? over 12, 12.4. The thing is, when I gave it to you, it was over 12.4. But when I had it in the machine, it doesn't really work right. I, I don't know what it is. Oh, that's for a sucker. Uh, sucker? Yeah, it's for a motor. You suck the vacuum hose pipe. Bob and Larry came by, did some trading, they needed some parts for an LT-1000, I had them, I gave it to him, uh, he gave me all that stuff, uh, 
like a backpack blower, a couple of leaf blowers, um, a couple of weed whackers, whatever he found them on the street. He was going to throw them out. I guess I could use them for parts. I'll have to store it somewhere in the backyard. Uh, so, an hour we have wasted just bullshitting with Bob and Larry, but it's okay. I always love seeing those guys. Uh, anyway, uh, what I did was, it just wouldn't fit, you know, it kept on rubbing. So I had to, what else can I do? I just have to make it work, right? I mean, look, it's not the space shuttle, right? Just uh, make it work, you know? So I, the bottom tin underneath the flywheel, I just bent them higher so that this thing wouldn't, so that the shroud wouldn't hit the, the plastic fins of the blower fan on the flywheel, right? And then I, I was going to leave this off this cage for the air isolator of the grass, you know, this is here so it blows air upwards so that when you're mowing the lawn and the grass comes here, it won't gather in there, it'll blow it away. <laughs> but then again, you always see grass inside there, right? So obviously it doesn't really work, but it's better than not having it, right? So it wouldn't fit in there because it would hit the sides after I put this on. So I used my pliers and I just basically bent the sides upward so now it actually looks like it's you know encased in there so now it works see nothing rubs smooth good compression as a matter of fact I think the reason why this abruptly stops at low throttle is because it has too good compression the compression is too good uh, because I think the the pistons because they're both slightly damaged on the side it's kind of I think it's kind of rubbing on the cylinder wall, which isn't good, but like I said, I wasn't willing to spend a ton of money to get brand new pistons. I'm going to make it work, you know what I mean? Um, I think over time, over time, it'll smoothen out, hopefully. Anyway, so I've got this all done. Um, I need this side tin. The black metal tin that isolates the air off cylinder number one's head. I need that. You need that. Otherwise, this will overheat prematurely. I don't have that. And it's like $20 on eBay, which I'm not going to pay. But I think I might have some Kohler parts. So I just went to my backyard, bit of parts. I had a Kohler Command V-Twin at one time. And I sold most of the parts, but these are the parts that are still outstanding that I haven't sold yet. And these are the side covers for those. So I think this will do, you know what I'm saying? I'm just uh, looking at the left one and the right one just to see which one matches better. Uh, because the V-twin is pointed out like a V, right? You'll see that that's how this is designed, where the hole is actually not like that. But rather like that, you know. This is for the other side, but maybe this would fit better. Not really, because it actually has to insulate this whole part here, you know. Because the air is just flowing through here, and it's leaking out. Believe it or not, it's pretty important. I don't know. I don't think these will fit. I may have to make something. I have a pain to make something. But that's what's fun about all this, right? No. Yeah, no. Maybe if I make two of them, that might work. I'll figure it out. So I uh, fabricated the Kohler ones, two of them. I put, put two of them together to make one. Did some self-tapping screws right into here, and uh, it's solid. So, you know, I feel pretty good about that. Uh, of course, I can't sell those Kohler things anymore because I'm using the entire set. Uh, but nobody really wanted them anyway. Um, I uh, put this back on again, and uh, this thing's all set to go. I put the air cleaner base as well as the air cleaner, air cleaner cover on there. And... Uh, I attached the um, battery holder on here so the battery doesn't move around. You know, I have the parts, why not use them, right? I, uh, if this engine blows again, I'll end up taking all this stuff apart anyway, but uh, 
I feel pretty good about everything because it's now all together, even the hood. So the hood was a complete mess, right? You guys saw that? I had to grind out, I had to grind out all the, um, you know, the duct tape and the crap that was on here so that it wasn't so sticky. I mean, it was just so sticky and there's like this uh, string all over, you know, from the duct tape, you know, all dried up. So I had a uh, plastic chicken box, you know, where you get the fried chicken from like a stop and shop or something like that, you know, uh, an eight piece fried chicken meal for $6.99. The top cover was thin, clear plastic. It was so thin that it could... I, I put silicone on it and just put it right over the big hole over here. Kind of bent it a little bit, right? And then I used Gorilla Tape to keep it down just so the silicone would cure, you know? But this Gorilla Tape is so strong, right? That when this dries and cures, I'm going to pull the Gorilla Tape off. I don't think it's going to come off. I think once I try to pull this off, right, it's going to pull the entire plastic thing off anyway. So, you know what, I'm just I'm just going to keep it like this. I'll probably spray this black or something like that. Or maybe I'll get a can of the green and just at least make it look a little, you know, greener, at least to match. But uh, that, that's about all I'm going to do about that. You know what I mean? Um, so now I'm going to um, try to start my Acura after it's been charging most of the day. Uh, once I do get it started, that is, if I start it, I'm going to uh, back the car out, or like they say in Canada, oh, and um, maybe start up my tractor and see if it rolls forward and backwards. You know what I mean? I actually, I could probably do that now without moving the car, but I gotta, I gotta check on the car anyway. So let's see if the car starts. So, uh, kind of cleaned up my tools and all that stuff, and uh, I'm just going to start it right now and uh, see if it moves forward or backwards, and uh, see if the mower deck works. Um, I hope the engine doesn't blow. second and then from the load it just stopped.
that's actually the lowest throttle. I was never able to lower the throttle all the way down. The minute I put the throttle down, it wanted to stall. But now the throttle goes all the way down. However, this is still choke. The minute I put the choke to run, it wants to stall. at the lowest throttle and full run. now So uh, battery, uh, stator is charging the battery at 13 volts or so. So, um, pretty happy. I still have to, I still have to mess with this a little bit in terms of the, um, the adjustments to idle as well as the throttle because there's just some, there's still something that's wrong with it. But uh, I'm happy that it runs. Uh, it moves, it mows and all that, so everything seems to work as it should. It just needs a little bit of adjustment in terms of the throttle, I think, and maybe the carburetor might need some adjustment. Uh, this thing I'll figure out as we move forward, but uh, how about that? We ran this for a good while and uh, at full throttle, and um, I'm happy that the engine hasn't blown yet, you know? 
Um, everything seems to be pretty good. Uh, did quite a bit today. Um, kind of cleaned this up a little bit. Put the engine cover on. Made my own tins from an old Kohler. Um, put the plenum back on. And uh, the battery um, holder. And what else? Pretty much stuff, you know, and uh, every day you just notch a little bit off at a time, you know what I mean? It's, it's getting there. Um, not perfect by any means, but uh, hey, this was rolled in here, pushed into the garage with a uh, busted engine. We're going to be able to drive this out running, you know? I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel, buy a sticker. Also, follow me on Instagram, at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.